Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And today I wanted to show you how you can make your own yarn needle threader. Really simple. And all you need is some duct tape, any color you want, and a good strong thread of, again, any color you want. This is what I have on hand. Just make sure it's a good strong thread like you would use for sewing leather or coats or anything that's heavy like that. Uh, those are going to work best. Even a, a thinner thread will work as long as it's nice and strong. And uh, anyway, let me show you how you do it and then I'll talk some more about how I use it and show you how to use it. Here's, here's my yarn needle. Now I know there's bigger needles in this with bigger eyes and all that, but these are the ones I like for when I'm sewing anything, any kind of crocheted thing, such as when I'm sewing flowers and buttons onto hats like this. Okay, I like to use this size. I don't like using anything uh, larger than that. And also when I'm doing amigurumi where you're making little animals and dolls and stuff, and you need a smaller needle for sewing the legs, arms, whatever, head onto the body of whatever it is you're making. So anyway, how I do this is, and I've tried other threaders that you can buy and they're, they're junk, they don't work. They always break. So I came up with this idea. Okay, and don't mind my hands, I have green uh, paint stained on my hands because I was spray painting something the other day. So anyway, um, what you wanna do is cut yourself a length of thread that's at least about that long. So let's see, that's folded in half. Oh, maybe about 10 inches or so. You can also make it longer so you can have a double-ended threader, which is what I've started doing. So I'm gonna do that for this. So I'm gonna go for about, oh, 20 inches. Okay, like that, and then I'm gonna snip that off. And then what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna go ahead and tie a knot just to kind of keep it in place the way I want it. I'm just tying a square knot towards the end of the yarn, of the thread that is, excuse me. And my fingernails are also stained from the spray paint. <laughs> Long story. So then make sure the ends, you can snip these off if you want. I recommend keeping them. In fact, what I did was put that knot right in the center and then the last one I made, I uh, tied right around the center of this. This is just gonna be the most secure. Making it this way with a double end is actually gonna be the most secure and it gives you two ends and that way if eventually one breaks, you have another one for a backup. Okay, so then I just tie it around the center like that. And again, you can snip those ends a little shorter if you want. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave them. Now, what I wanna do is cut off a chunk of, I don't wanna use those scissors. Make sure you don't use your good sewing scissors to cut the tape which those are there. These are just scissors for paper and whatever else. So take that tape, whatever tape it is you use, and put the center, the knot, right in the center of the tape, the best you can get it. And then just take these pieces here, these end pieces. If you didn't cut them off, I just like to leave them. I just, I don't know. I just feel like it makes it more secure. Then fold this end over like that. Then take your longer strip. So I cut off several inches there, maybe about six inches. And let's see, whoop. I don't wanna fold it quite that thin. I like to make it a little wider than that. So figure out about how wide you want it to be. I like it approximately an inch wide, give or take a little. And then just wrap it around like that, okay? And then if you want, you can make it thicker by cutting another piece to wrap around. Let's go ahead and do that. Usually I don't do make it too thick when I first make it, and I'll explain that one, I'll explain why in a bit, but I think I will want that one just a little bit thicker. Because I already have a nice one made up, but I'd like to have one, I keep that one in the other room and I'd like one for in here for when I'm sitting in here doing stuff. Okay, so that's gonna be your handle. Now you've got two ends to work from and again, if one end breaks after a while, because eventually it will wear out and it'll break, but as cheap and easy as these are to make new ones, um, I've used the same one for years before it broke. 
So then, but then when one end breaks, you just turn it over and do it again. And then if you don't want to start all new, you know, you can, the reason why I don't always start these with a big thick pad is that uh, if, if both ends end up breaking, you can just add to this, just wrap some thread around it this way, have an end or two coming off and then put a new piece of tape around it. By wrapping the thread around or, or around this way even, what you already have, it's gonna secure it and keep it from pulling out. But if you've got a double end anyway, that's actually gonna make it fairly secure. So all you need to do then is, is you take your needle and if you are my age and you need reading glasses, I suggest you put some reading glasses on and just stick your end to kind of hold it tightly enough that you can stick the loop through like that. It sh the thread should be stiff enough that it should slide right through there pretty easy. Just like that. And then you take your yarn, put it in that loop, pull the end through enough that it's not going to slip out, and then pull on that until it pulls through. This is actually a smaller hole than the other yarn needle I have I like to use the most. Okay, so let me demonstrate that again. And like I said, I'll use the other end when our end's a little shorter than the other. Uh, eventually, it'll wear out and you'll just need to add some new thread and make a new one. But again, these, I've had mine last for years. And that was back when I was making a lot of amigurumi and sewing on a lot of pieces or animal hats with eyes and the whole bit with the, you know, the ear flap hats with ears and all this kind of stuff. And I was sewing, using a lot of yarn, sewing all these different things on. So yeah, just put your yarn through that loop and pull until it comes through. Okay, let's do it one more time. I wanna make sure I get as many different views as I can. So let me go a little slower on this. So I don't know if you can see that hole. Okay, I stick, I, you see how close I'm holding this? Again, don't mind my stained fingernails. And then stick that through there like that, pull it through. So you can hold it like that, make sure the needle is hanging off there. Stick your fingers through like that to grab your yarn and pull it through the loop. Okay, then you grab your needle after you pull the yarn through and then just pull on the threader until the yarn comes through and you got the end like that. Okay, so that's it. Very simple, very easy, very cheap way to make your own threader. Don't go down to the store and buy three to five dollar threaders when you can make one with just what stuff, you know, with just tape and a heavy duty thread. And then you can always make new ones when they break. And this should last you for quite a while. So without having to make a new one anyway. I just like to have several of them on hand because I, I tend to misplace them a lot. So. <laughs> anyway, the, and the double end makes it not only more secure, but just gives you a backup loop on the other side so you don't have to hurry. You don't have to run and make another one. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed my little frugal tip on how to make your own threader for threading yarn needles. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.